Hey guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance on my other channel. On this channel, I talk about other things like today when I'll be reviewing the new Nollywood film, The Kujus Again. The Kujus Again is the sequel to the highly successful 2020 comedy drama Introducing the Kujus. In this second installment, the Kuju family gathers together at a resort for a few days for the traditional wedding of one of its members. The film is produced by Temple Motion Pictures and it's directed by the prolific Bjordan Steven. Now this review will contain mild spoilers. So if you're watching just to find out if I think you should go and see this film, then yes, I think you should go and see this movie. I think it will be worth your time. You have my permission to go and watch the Kujus again. So you might want to stop watching the review here because like I said, we're, ent we're entering spoiler territory in a few seconds. Um, but yeah, the film is entertaining, it's funny, and it has an ensemble cast that really works well together. Speaking of the cast, let's dive into it starting by looking at the performances in this movie. Now just like the previous film, this movie has a cast of high-profile actors. You have Bisola Ayola as Maosi, Bimbo Ademuye as her niece, Ebi, Ronke Odusoya as Ebi's mom, Maokwe, Sophia Alakija as Lily, uh, Mimi Onoloja as um, Pamela, and you also have Lilian Adiroba as the hotel manager, Gloria. The women did a fantastic job in this movie. First of all, they're all lovely to look at. They're all really looking very good. Their outfits and their makeup, everything on point. I particularly liked the scenes that um, Bimbo Adimuye and Bisola Ayola shared uh, as, you know, an aunt and her niece. They had really good on-screen chemistry in that regard. And even their individual scenes were really good. I liked that Bisola kind of um, had a, well, her character anyway, Mousy, was kind of living the baby girl life a bit in this film because... If you've seen the trailer, you'll know that Don Jazzy's character is sort of interested in her. So uh, he kind of spoils her a bit. And, you know, Mao Si is just, she's just chilling in the film, kind of, most of the time. Bisola's character, Mao Si, had, I think, less of a role this time around than in the first movie. And I didn't mind. But she still had sufficient screen time. And I actually liked the dynamic that she was in this time around. Bimbo Ademuye's character, Ebi. Kudos to Bimbo Ademuye because... It wasn't until I was watching the film that I realized that Bimbo is actually playing a, a young girl, like a girl in her like early 20s or mid 20s. Someone that's actually like much younger than who Bimbo is in real life. And Bimbo, I guess that's the um, hallmark of a good actor, right? If you can play someone or a character that's really younger or really older than you actually are. And it didn't really dawn on me prior to the movie. But I was as I was watching the movie, I was like, this person that Bimbo is playing seems to be a much younger person than who Bimbo actually is and it dawned on me because she was actually pulling it off and I also remembered from like the previous movie that this is who she was this young girl who is you know discovering herself a bit naive and a bit shy and whatnot I guess what I'm trying to say is that Bimbo's performance was very convincing and I like I liked how she embodied the character and I guess it's just a testament to how well Bimbo Ademoye can embody different characters, you know, that she's she's played. If you've seen Bimbo's work in the past, I don't know, two, three, four years, you realize that Bimbo has played a range of characters and she's really good at it. So this is just another feather in her hat. Kudos to Bimbo Ademoye. Ronke Odusaya, who played Maokwe, I believe. Um, Ebi's mom, fantastic job as well. Feisty and fiery. I enjoyed her performance, particularly in... Um, the lobby scene where, you know, Kunle Remy shows up in a towel and they're trying to sort out their accommodation issues. Mimi Onoloja did really good as well as um, the wife of Femi Jacobs' character, Dr. Maoti. Um, it was very believable. Their, I mean, their chemistry. I, <laughs> I was going to talk about the age gap between both actors, but I guess that's neither here nor there because maybe even the characters in the film, there's an age gap as well. But regardless of the age gap, their chemistry was really good. Uh, Mimi Onoloja, I, I, I don't even know if Mimi Onoloja is really, if we, if professionally she refers to herself an, as an actress or a presenter. I mean, I haven't seen her in that many movies. I think I know her more for influencing and for, um, I guess, presenting. But when she does appear in films, I think the only other film I've seen her in was in the first Kuju's film. The point I'm trying to make is she's really good. Whether she's like a full-on actress or she just, you know, acts from time to time, She's really good and she was very convincing and I, I think she did a good job in this film. Finally, well, not 
technically finally but next i want to talk about um sofia lakija fantastic job sofia lakija is a phenomenal actress yes i said the word phenomenal whenever i see sofia lakija in anything her performance she always gives a hundred and ten percent and her performance is always memorable even if she's in a film that that i don't rate or i don't enjoy for example my village people Sophia Lakija was one of the better things in that, in that movie. Her performance was A1. And in this film as well, you could see and feel her giving 110% to her performance as Lily, the character who is uh, getting married to Kunle Remy's character. If you've seen the first movie, you understand or you remember that they're seeing each other in that movie and in this movie, they're getting married, right? So she had more of a prominent role this time around. And like I said, Sophia Lakija did a great job I could feel the emotions and I could just, it was very convincing. Kudos to her. Finally, I want to talk about Lilian Adiroba. She had a very small role in the film playing the hotel manager, but um, she looked very fine. <laughs> so I felt like it, it was worth mentioning <laughs> that she was in this film and that she did a good, a good job. Well, if by doing a good job, I mean she looked really attractive in the movie. When I was watching the film, I didn't know that was Lilian, Lilian Adiroba from Big Brother Niger from that year, right? I was just looking at this woman. I was like, wow, this woman is very attractive. She looks familiar. Where have I seen her before? And that bone straight wig that she had on, it was straight. <laughs> but she was looking really fine. It wasn't until after the movie that I saw, you know, her name in the credits. And I was like, oh, that's Lilian from Big Brother Niger. She looked really good. She's... I mean, the years have been fair to her. I think her season of Big Brother Niger was the lockdown season, 2020, three years ago. So yeah, and I don't follow her on Instagram, so I don't know what's been going on in her life, but she's, she seems to be doing quite well for herself. <laughs> and now for the men that were in the Kujus again, you've got Kunle Remy, who plays Mao Yon. You've got Femi Jacobs, who played Dr. Mao Ti. Timini Eguson, who played Mao Bey. Don Jazzy, who played the Don. Fola Remy Agumbi Ade, who played Chooks, and Oliekun, who played Pastor. Great job from the men in this film. Special shout out to Kunle Remy. He's just such a leading man, and it's nice to see him in films where he's like front and center, especially since the success of Anikulapo. Kunle Remy has been, you know, on the blogs and, you know, on people's lips a lot this week and last week since the EMVCA nominations came out and his name wasn't there for, you know, best actor in a drama or whatever. And, Lots of people were upset about that, and I, I'm still hoping that we can get an answer as to why Kule Remy was not nominated. But honestly, left to many actors, I think they'd much rather take the love that Kule Remy gets from the public and the fans than some trophy or some nomination, right? Shout out Kule Remy. Um, Femi Jacobs, fantastic. Uh, he plays, you know, if you've seen the first movie, he's this very stern oldest brother like the patriarch of the family and he carries that on in this film as well this time as this time though he has a daughter so he's very fussy about his daughter um he did a really good job for some reason which we may never find out or know why towards the end of the film he's mysteriously absent in the movie yeah like i said this film contains mild spoilers so if you haven't seen the film you shouldn't be watching this review <laughs> but if you're here you have yourself to blame. So that, yeah, at some point in the film, we stopped seeing Femi Jacobs. In the story, they say that, you know, he has to go back to the hospital because there was an emergency. But I really wonder what actually happened on set. If, you know, Femi Jacobs seems like one of those disciplined actors who, you know, once his time or his contract is up, he's out. Sayonara. Or he may have had, you know, prior engagements or commitments that didn't allow him to continue with the production or he may have had an emergency who knows but i just really wonder what happened you know as to why he just vanishes at the end of the film or towards the end of the film uh that was a detour <laughs> forgive me uh, moving on timini egbusan as maube timini did, did a really good job basically playing the same everybody in this film plays the same character that they did in the last film but um the consistency with timini's character from his character in the last film to this film was really there I appreciated it and timini um let me just say this about timini he's um doing quite well we haven't seen timini a lot lately like we used to i mean for the past few months things have been quiet from you know his end in terms of movies and, and series but all of a sudden timini is everywhere currently he has two films in the cinemas he has 
Maniac, and he has this film, The Kujus Again. By this Friday, he'll also have um, The Blossom Boys or The Bloom Boys or something like that and um, Honey Money. So Timini is going to have four films in the cinemas at the end of this week or from the end of this week onwards. That is no small feat for not just for a Nollywood actor, but even for a Hollywood actor to have four movies showing simultaneously in the cinemas. And Timini is breaking, in my books, his own record because last year, I think in January or February, he had three films in cinemas, Superstar, uh, Juju Stories, and Dinner at My Place. And I remember making a big deal out of it that Timini has three films in the cinema. Now he has, by the end of this week, he's going to have four films in the cinema. Shout out to Timini. That's no easy, easy feat at all. I can't name another actor who has pulled that off. Anyway, moving on. He did a good job. For Laremi Agumbiade as Chooks, he did a good job as well. Don Jazzy as the Don in this film. Shout out to John, Don Jazzy. Don Jazzy always shows up when he, I'm sure he's a hard man to catch, but when he commits to something or says he's going to, you know, give you his time or be there for you, he's there. He didn't just flash in this film like I thought he would. I thought he'd just have like two or three scenes. Don, Don Jazzy had a few scenes in this film and he was quite instrumental to the story. And um, his acting, it wasn't much of acting. It was, just, it was just basically Michael Collins being Michael Collins at the end of the day. But it was very sweet, um, particularly with his dynamic with uh, Bisola Ayola, which I'll talk about later on when I talk about what I liked about this movie. But I think Don Jazzy was sufficient. He did a good enough job. I enjoyed seeing him in the film and he brought his own unique flavor to the movie. Uh, finally, Oli Ekun as pastor. I wasn't expecting to see him in the film, but he did quite well. I follow him on Instagram. He's quite funny. He didn't play the character he plays on Instagram per se, um, but he did do a lot of the um, signature things that his character on Instagram is known for. I guess the point I'm making is that he was funny. He was a pleasant surprise. I enjoyed seeing him in the movie and it was nice to see him do something different um, than what I know him for on Instagram. What I liked. I liked the resort that they filmed most of this movie in. I think the name was Oasis Resort or something like that. It looked really nice and I wouldn't be surprised if that place gets lots and lots of business because of this movie, The Kujus Again. It looked like a very nice place. I also liked the chemistry between the couples in this film. I mean, Mimi Onoloja and Femi Jacobs, Don Jazzy and Bisola Ayola, um, Kunle Remy and Sofia Lakija, all the couples, they had good chemistry. And I was particularly surprised by the chemistry between Don Jazzy and Bisola Ayola. It was, it was giving. And you could almost see them, you know, being a couple in real life. And um, I liked it. I really liked it. And I think other people will appreciate it when they see the movie. And I think it helps because I guess they're such familiar characters to the general public that you can't help but root for them or their characters rather as you watch the movie. I also like that this film was, um, it was actually funny. It was quite funny. And um, I mean, I reviewed this film, sorry, I reviewed the first movie introducing the Kujus back in 2000, right? And first of all, I didn't particularly like it. Yeah, you can watch the review and find out why. But aside from that, I didn't really find it very funny. Incidentally, that one felt more like a drama. This one felt more like a comedy. And it was funny, like I said, the jokes landed. And yeah, I liked that it was funny. What else did I enjoy about this movie? I liked the um, that they really did feel like a family unit. And it felt like, you know, like they were a stronger, more united um group of people than they were in the first movie for some reason and it's that's not easy to pull off when you have such a large cast but for some reason i felt they all, all just felt familiar to each other and they felt familiar to me as well and i like that what i didn't like i didn't like the comedic music they kept on playing in this film at certain points particularly at the beginning of the movie there's this soundtrack that you know sometimes in these nollywood films they play them during funny moments so that you know it's a funny moment i think it could have done without those sounds or that music or that soundtrack you hear it a lot particularly in skits on social media and on youtube right i don't know if i want to hear those sounds in movies it kind of makes the movie feel a bit tacky anyway i didn't enjoy hearing those sounds in the film and i think they were played one too many times if at all i was going to condone it i don't think i should have had to condone it so many times in this film secondly the casino scene in this movie felt like it dragged. Um, once again, spoiler alert or mild spoilers. 
there are some characters in this film who lose a bit of money in a casino. They do a whole the, the hangover type of thing in this film where something happens the night before and everybody's looking for something the following morning, right? So anyway, there's a casino scene where some characters lose a, a whole lot of money and they flash back to that scene and that scene takes way longer than it needs to as you're watching this film and that portion of the film made it, made it feel like this film dragged and I really did not like that. That casino scene could have been like a third of the duration that it was. Yeah. Finally, I didn't like that um, Chooks and Ebby, we didn't get like a, a conclusion to their subplot. Ebby, she has like, she's at odds with her boyfriend, um, Chooks, who is played by Folaremi Agumbiade. So they're, they have, they're having issues essentially. But it seems like we don't get a proper resolution to their issues in this film. And I it kind of, I felt somewhat shortchanged. And I thought about it because this film actually ends really well. But that particular element, it just felt like it was just like a thorn in my flesh. And like I said, I thought about it. And I think the problem is that when you have Bimbo Ademoye in a film, um, people tend to be very keen on Bimbo Ademoye's character, you know, having, <laughs> for want of a better expression, a, a happy ending, well, a, a proper, a, a, an amiable resolution, right? You want that character to be happy by the end of the film. Uh, and I think it's because we idealize Bimbo Ademoye's characters. Um, we, we just want the best for any character that she plays, I think. And the fact that we didn't really get closure with that character by the end of the film kind of felt like a, a ripoff, you know? I mean, on that in that regard, but also the fact that it felt like there were things that needed to be explained you know, between, well, regarding rather, I should say, what was going on between Chooks and Ebby. And we, we didn't seem to get that. And I also think, you know, by when the movie was over, before I even left the theater, I found myself saying that I wish they had devoted, tying up the Ebby and Chooks issue, you know, I wish they devoted some time to that rather than spending so much time on the casino scene. They could have taken like five minutes away from the casino scene and dedicated those five minutes to Ebby and Chooks' story. Yeah. Who should see it? Um, see the Kujus again. First of all, if you saw Introducing the Kujus from three years ago. Wow, it's already been three years. I think it came out late 2020, around December, right? Time flies. So if you saw the first movie and you enjoyed it, I think you'll enjoy this movie as well. Like I said earlier, I didn't particularly enjoy the first movie, but I really actually enjoyed this one. So see it in that on that account. Also, if you're a fan of any of the actors in this film, Kunleremi, Bisola, Yola, Bimbo, Ademoye, Timini, Ebusan, Ronke, Odusaya, I think you'll enjoy seeing them in this movie as well. It's weird because as I watched this film, I kept on thinking of all the other films that many of these actors have been in together. For example, Bisola, Timini, and um, Sophie were all in Dinner at My Place like last year. Um, Timini, Bisola, and Bimbo were in Breaded Life, which was also directed by Bjorn Steven, who directs this film. Um, Kunli Remy and Bimbo were also in Anikulapo, which was big last year as well. These actors have been in so many films together, you know, separately. It's just weird seeing them play, you know, siblings, you know, in many of the cases in this particular film, when in other films there were love interests and whatnot. It's, it's all very interesting. Finally, see this movie, The Kujis again. If you're a fan of Don Jazzy's, um, Don Jazzy doesn't do a lot of acting, not to my knowledge. I think I can't think of any other movie he's been in. But, you know, he got sufficient screen time in this film and it was nice to see him acting. And I, he even looked like he had a good time. He, he didn't feel like he was being pressured or, you know, he like he was trying to, you know, pay back a favor that he was doing for someone or anything like that. He was actually, he looked like he had a good time and he actually did a good job in my opinion. So if you're a fan of Don Jazzy, you want to see Don, Don Jazzy in a movie, then see this movie as well. In conclusion, The Kujus again was surprisingly entertaining. It was better than the first movie and you don't see that very often. More often than not, the first movie is better than the sequel. But for me, the sequel was better than the first movie. You should have seen the people in the cinema where I watched this film. The guy that sat like a few seats to my left, he was laughing his head off. He had the time of his life. And a few people in the cinema as well, they were talking back at the screen and they were laughing. And when stuff like that happens, it's very encouraging. It shows that people really engage and uh, with the movie or you know with what's going on in the movie so i feel like this film is going to do really well it's already done really well in, in its first week it's been out for almost a week at this point and uh yeah 
I think good things are going to happen for this film going forward. A word to the writers and to Bjorn Steven, though. Please, if this is going to be a trilogy, if you're doing a third movie, I don't see why you shouldn't. I think you should. Tie up the loose ends, right? Like that thing that happened between Ebby and um, Chooks, right? Minor, minor lapses like that shouldn't happen in the film, especially if you do a third film. Please, let it be perfect. Tie up all the loose ends, dot your I's, cross your T's. There is enough time to plan out the third film in the trilogy i hope you're doing a trilogy uh just make sure everything is done well and like i said you know i's are dotted and t's are crossed thank you guys so much for watching this review um i hope you enjoyed it if you did please like it by clicking on the like button just underneath the video and subscribe to my channel as well by clicking on the black subscribe button you doing those things really would really help me this video and my channel a great deal because i'm really trying to grow my numbers here on youtube so once again please like the video by clicking on the like button and subscribe to my channel as well if you want to knock my socks off right share this video with anyone who you feel will enjoy it by using the share feature underneath the video or copying the url at the top of the screen and sending it to someone or even dropping it in a whatsapp group that would really go a long way on this channel, I don't just do Nollywood movie reviews. I also talk about relationships to check out some of my past, some, to check out some of my relationship videos or to check out some of my reviews, my past Nollywood reviews, like my introducing the Kujus review. You can click the card in the corner of the screen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go out and see the Kujus again if you haven't. Hopefully, I haven't spoiled it for you with this review. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.